bless you. Just pray that you would just open our hearts, give us understanding of your words, and help us, oh God, uh, not just to listen, but help us, oh God, to really, to really have insight and have some revelation of uh, what is it to become a missionary or how can we be a part of that great commission. We thank you, Lord. We ask this thing in Jesus' name. We, we pray. Amen and amen. All right. So, ano kaya ang Great Commission? What, what is the Great Commission? Okay. Ano ba yung Great Commission? So, the Great Commission is not just a commandment of a famous king or a famous president or a famous person. The greatest commandment is the commandment of someone that is the greatest who ever lived on earth. Kaya hindi natin siya pwedeng baliwalain. Okay? So, he's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Sabi niya sa, sa Matthew 28, Go and make disciples to all nations. So, yun yung greatest commandment. And if you are a Christian, you are not exempted to that. All of us has a part to do in the Great Commission, in bringing the Gospel of Christ, not only here, uh, in our, our family, neighbors, and even to the nations of the world. All right? Amen. Come on, give the Lord a praise for that. Yes, thank you, God, for your mandate. Thank you, Jesus. So we have 195 nations in the world. And uh, do you know that, uh, do you know when Jesus said, go into all the world and make disciple of all nations? Ang word na all nation comes from the word ethnic. Ibig sabihin ng e ethnic, uh, uh, these are people groups that they have their own language, they have their own maybe a dialect, they have their own way of living, culture, they have uh, uh, their own beliefs. So kakaiba sila. So halimbawa dito in the Philippines, uh, we, have, we are a nation of the Philippines, but inside us, there are so many nations. Okay? So sa bawat bansa na yan, ang 195 nations of the world, there are different nations inside that. And all together, we have like, uh, like 16,445 people groups on the planet. Sabihin nga natin, wow! Wow! Sabihin nga natin? So, imagine 195 Nation, yun lang alam natin, pero meron pa pala. There are 19, more than 19,000, 19 nations or ethnic group inside that nation. So sa atin, sa Philippines, it's like, you know, may mga uh, group like Batak, uh, Ipugao, Maranao, at iba-iba pang mga people groups. Sila yung tinatawag natin na mga, mga nations inside our nations. Now, uh, it's really challenging kasi more than 19,000 nations that needs to be rich. And there, uh, somehow, na-reach na o na-evangelize na yung more than 9,385. 9, na-evangelize na dahil mayroon na siyang 2% population of Christian living in that place. And so they were able to, to translate the Bible into their own dialect. They have radio station, and there are some Christian churches, Christ, some uh, Christian churches around that place. So, ang tawag natin doon, re, they are rich, or we call evangel, evan, they are uh, the evangelized people groups. Na evangelize na sila. Pero, meron pang 7,060 people groups all around the world na wala pang significant 2% witness. Ibig sabihin, wala pang 2% yung Christian sa kanilang, sa kanilang mga bansa. Imagine, more than 9,000. 9,000, hindi pa nare-reach. At if you go, lalo na yung mga, yung mga mahilig mag-travel dyan, di ba? Mapapansin ninyo na pag pumunta kayo sa nations of Asia, actually, kung titingnan natin, we're the only Christian nations all over Asia. So lahat ng mga neighbors natin around us are not Christians. They have like maybe 0.001% na Christian. So, kakaunti lang talaga. And if you go to those places, 
At tanungin mo yung driver ng taxi o kung sino man na, you know, uh, nandun sa nations like Malaysia, Thailand, or uh, sa, uh, dito sa Brunei, sa, sa uh, Bhutan, or India, they don't know the name about Jesus. Even you ask them, do you know the name Jesus? Do you know who is he? So hindi nila kilala. Mas kilala nila yung Coca-Cola, mas kilala nila yung mga different brand of cigarettes or maybe uh, soft drinks or br a brand ng mga like uh, ng mga soap mas kilala nila yon so that really put us on like wow it's very challenging sobra talagang laki ng responsibility upang we would be able to reach them all right and of course tayo yung neighbor Tayo yung magre-reach out sa kanila. So ito yung mga nation like, you know, uh, Japan, Brunei, Indonesia, and uh, uh, some different nations too. They are just two to three hours to go from the Philippines to those places. So Jesus said in Matthew 20, 24, 14, uh, are you there? Are you listening? Amen. So sabi niya, Jesus said, Okay, he is the, the greatest person that ever lived. Sabi niya, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a testimony to all nations, then the end will come. So, kapag yung gospel na i-preach na to these different people groups, or to this unreached people group, or to this unevangelized people group, saka lang darating ang Panginoon. Amen? Ang dami-daming rumors na darating na, ang, na darating na si Jesus. And it's good to be ready. And it's good also if he comes. Pero hindi mangyayari 'yon kung hindi pa natin na na reach out o na evangelize ang other nations of the world. So, if we want Jesus to return, it would be good for him to return now kasi hindi pa ganoon sobrang hirap ang mundo dahil darating ang times magka mag, magiging napakahirap na at Talagang, if you are really a Christian, ang hope lang natin, ang answer sa situation is si Jesus. And we want Him to come. Amen? Gusto ba natin siyang dumating? Alright? Amen. Palapakan nga natin ang Panginoon. Thank you, Jesus. Come, Jesus. Come. So, Luke 10, 27 also, it says here, Love the Lord your God with all your heart. And with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Ito yung first and the greatest commandment, to love the Lord your God. Siya yung mauna, siya yung una sa yung buhay. Siya yung higit mong mas mamahalin. At ang pangalawang greatest commandment is what? Love your neighbor as yourself. So sino ba yung mga neighbor natin? Yan nga yung mga countries around us. Minsan, ang isip natin, ay, uh, okay lang yan, yung mga Americans o yung mga taga-England or other country from the Europe, sila yung mag-evangelize sa mga nations na ito. But, uh, these people, like 83% of them, live around, around our uh, vicinity or around uh, Asia, around the Philippines. So, who do you think would reach them out. Sino yun? Sinong magre-reach out sa kanila? Di ba? Pag tayo kumakanta ka tulad kanina, kumanta tayo ng song na, Here am I, Lord, send me. Ah, kinakanta natin talagang with all our heart pa. Meron pa tayong talagang paluhod-luhod dyan. Pero pagka talagang ikaw na yung papadala, Lord, ah, send her. Okay? Sumasagot tayo, Lord, here am I, send her. <laughs> Lord, ako ang magpipray sa kanya. Ako ang magsusupport sa kanya. So ako yung, which is good also, but if God has a call in your life, you better be at the center of God's will because that's the best that could ever happen in your life. Amen? So we need to be able to love the Lord God and also to be able to love our neighbor. So we are the neighbor of this nation. So we have a greater responsibility kesa dun sa mga puti o kesa dun sa mga uh, ibang bansa. Dahil tayo ang nandito. We are the witness. We, kailangan tayuan natin to. Do you think hindi nagkamali ang Lord kung bakit nandun tayo sa gitna ng mga 
uh, Buddhist countries na ito, Muslim countries na ito, do you think nagkamali ang God? No. It is uh, strategic. It has been prophesied again and again that the Filipinos are going to be used as a missionary in other parts of the world. Hindi naman kailangan iwanan mo ang work mo. If you are working there, you have the mind and the heart to reach out also those people. Pag nandun ka hindi para lang sa sarili mo, you have a higher purpose. Why are you going to that nation? Not only to earn money, not only para mabless ka. You have a higher purpose. God has sent you there to be a witness to other people. So last Sunday, we talk about, uh, you know, nga, we, we talk about it just seems impossible. This mission that God gave us seems to be impossible, hindi ba? Toto ba yan? Imposible? Yes, imposible talaga. And without Christ, hindi natin kaya tong gawin. But, Praise the Lord, it might be overwhelming, pero it might be impossible, but impossible mission could be possible. Alright? So what are the things? How could we possibly do it? Katulad ng na-share ko sa inyo last Sunday, number one is, it's possible, of course, through God's promises, through God's word. Sa pamagitan ng salita niya, walang imposible sa kanya. Amen? Walang imposible doon sa nananampalataya sa Panginoon. So, if we have the Word of God, if we have uh, the promises of God, kanina, yung sa, sa Matthew 9, 9, uh, 28, na sinabi rin ni Jesus sa bandang huli, go, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all that I have commanded you, and lo, I am always with you till the end of time. Amen? So that's the greatest promise of God to those who will go. Amen? To those who will baptize people, to those who will equip, to those who will disciples, to those who will teach people to obey the commandment of God. Amen? Come on, palakpakan natin ang Panginoon. That's His promise. Amen? At ang pangalawang pangako niya, how could this be possible? Ano pa? Yung uh, uh, number two is, He gave us through God's Holy Spirit. This is possible through God's Holy Spirit. Sabihin nga natin, Holy Spirit. So, if we have the Holy Spirit, if we receive Him, we receive the power. We receive the authority. Amen? Sabihin nga natin, I receive the power. I receive the authority. So, kung nasa iyo ng Holy Spirit, God is going to change you from the inside out. God is going to give you the grace, the strength, all the kailangan mo para to be able to be a part of this mission. So, uh, we need the Holy Spirit. Amen? It's impossible to do anything or even to live the Christian life without the Holy Spirit. Kung ikaw ay... Uh, You know, like, you know, ma-attend ka, but you ignore the Holy Spirit, hindi mo siya sinusunod, it would be impossible for you to live the Christian life. Amen? At kailangan-kailangan din natin, we need to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. We need to be immersed in the power of God. And that is through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, wait till you receive the power on high, and you will be my witnesses. So, Uh, being immersed, being baptized in the Holy Spirit means that we will have that dynamite power. Amen? Sabihin nga natin, dynamite power. We will have that dynamite power to witness. Makukuha natin yung attention ng tao. Babibigyan tayo ng Lord ng strategy how to reach them out. How our lives could be a witness unto them. Bibigyan niya tayong kapangyarihan to believe God, to lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. He will give us authority and power over the work of darkness when we receive the Holy Spirit. Amen? Yes, come on. Palakpakan natin ang Panginoon. Give Him praise. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your authority. At yung pangatlo, katulad ng nasabi ko, uh, we, this mission is possible through the body of Christ. Okay? So this mission is possible through the body of Christ. When we come together as a body, all right, 
Uh, tayong lahat, we are part of the body of Christ. Of course, alam natin yung katawan natin, may paa, may kamay, di ba? Tingnan nyo nga kung buo nga kayo dyan. Alright? <laughs> Praise God na Lord, thank you. Kompleto ako. Salamat, Panginoon. At kung hindi naman, andyan si Lord na siya yung tutulong sa'yo. Okay? The grace of God is upon you. So, you are complete in Christ. So, bilang katawan ni Kristo, may mga bahagi tayo. And we, kung tayo may mga bahagi, we need to be a part of the body of Christ. Kasi kung ikaw ay bahagi ng katawan ni Kristo, and yet, alimbawa sabi natin, paaka pala ng body of Christ, and you're just walking by yourself. Mag-isa ka lang nag-walk, yung paa lang ang nag-walk dun sa labas. Ano ang tingin mo dun? Naglalakad yung paa. Di ba? Parang, parang like, oh no! Like, multo! Parang ganun, di ba? Takbo ka na. Walang gustong uh, lumapit sa'yo. Because you need to be connected in the body. You need to be a part of the body so that you would be able to function properly. And so that we would be able to really accomplish what God wants us to do. And that is to do His great commandment. So dito po sa ating church, as a body of Christ, kayo ay bahagi dun sa mga, mga ginagawa po natin dito as a member of the family of Christ. So tayo po, we are giving 3 to 5% of our gross receipt na natatanggap natin as income to missions. So, we did also a lot of local missions like Tacloban, Leyte, Dabao, Bicol, Mindoro, Iloilo, at iba-iba pang lugar. So, we have churches all over that place. Our graduating students, several team of Filipinos, uh, we sent several team of Filipinos in a short-term missions in different nations of Asia for the past years. And of course, ngayon po, sinusuportahan natin si Pastor Cynthia Ronald. At ngayon, magche-church planting sila into another town in Cambodia. We're supporting uh, uh, Sister Mary Ann Castaneto sa Thailand. And even uh, Pastor John sa Myanmar. Ganun din po yung isang estudyante from Bhutan. Yung Bhutan is a close country. If you are from Bhutan, they consider you as a traitor if you are a Christian. Alright? So, ibig sabihin nun, they want to eliminate you. Wow, grabe po, ano, grabe yung persecution. And we thank God that we have freedom to preach the gospel. We have freedom here to practice our faith in God. Doon mahirap sa kanila. So these people, we are supporting that, them as a body of Christ. Sino supportahan natin sila upang the gospel of Christ will progress in different parts of Asia. So also our Bible school help prepare and train future missionaries by incorporating mission courses, and organizing short-term mission exposure every other year. So, uh, katulad this year, no, we will have uh, from Star Mall and dito sa atin, sa church natin, after ng summit na tinatawag sa Thailand, it's a seminar with the leaders ng different nations of Asia, pupunta yung iba sa, sa Cambodia to help sa church planting, to help in missions. So, praise God for that. Amen? And we are right now strategizing as how we can eventually send support and literally send dozens of missionary on the field in the future. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a praise for that. Thank you, Jesus. God, we are doing something for Asia. We are doing something as a body of Christ. And we cannot do this without you. Amen. Sabi mo nga sa katabi mo, we cannot do this without you. We need one another. We need to realign in we need to realign in what the body of Christ is doing and the body of Christ should realign in what the commander in chief the head is saying of course Jesus is the head of the church and we are his body we want to go where Jesus want to go amen we want to go where he wants us to go Hindi tayo pwedeng dito si Jesus papunta, ikaw papunta ka doon. Eh, paano ang tsura mo? <laughs> you know, you can't accomplish anything by yourself. And we can't accomplish anything kung kanya-kanya tayo. We have to realign with what God is doing, with what the head is doing. And we have to realign ourselves as a body. At ngayon po ay uh, number four is, uh, how can mission be possible? Ito yung medyo emphasis ko sa aking uh, message today. We can win. We can, we can uh, do the mission impossible. 
through sacrifice. Or even yung aking, mes- yung aking title ng message, what could be my part in the Great Commission? Lahat po tayo may part, and that is through sacrifice. Kailangan natin na meron tayong sakripisyo. Alam niyo po, ang Christianity, it, did not, it was not given birth na parang boom, basta na lang lubitaw yan. No. Uh, the Christianity was given birth through the sacrifice of His precious Son, Jesus Christ. Siya yung unang-una na nagpunta rito sa lupa to die for us. Binigay niya ang buhay niya sa atin. Isinakripisyo niya lahat-lahat, ang heaven, ang uh, lahat ng mga, mga glory. Sinakripisyo niya yan so that we will all be saved. Amen? Para tayo ay maligtas. Siya yun. Siya ang nag-sacrifice. So, Matthew 16.24, it says here, Jesus said to His disciples, Sabi rito, uh, whoever wants to be my disciple, ayan, okay, it's good na lumabas. Uh, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. So sabi ni Jesus, gusto mong maging disciple ko? Sabi niya, deny yourself. Hindi yung gusto mo ang dapat mangyari. Carry your cross. Lahat po tayo may kanya-kanyang cross, di ba? Sa family, sa school, sa work, mga personal struggles natin. Hindi tayo perfect lahat. But we need to carry that. We need to face that. And we need to overcome that. And Jesus said, and come, follow me. Ang kaligtasan libre, binigay na ng Lord lahat. But it's just starting from there. To, to follow Christ, to be a disciple of Christ, to become a disciple of Christ, you have to give everything that you have. I'm sorry. Pero uh, uh, minsan ang isip natin, pag Christian na tayo, wala nang problema. Pag Christian na tayo, ay maayos na yung buhay. Di ba? But there are challenges that is facing us. Becoming a Christian, we need to deny ourselves, carry our cross, and follow Him. And Jesus said, whoever save his life will lose it. Hinahanap mo ang buhay mo, mawawala yan. Pero yung naghahanap ng buhay, nagbibigay ng buhay para kay Kristo and for the gospel will find his life. Amen? Paradox, di ba? Parang opposite siya. That is Christianity. Kabaligtaran po tayo sa mundo. If we want to find our life, give your life first. So if you want to give your life, you will find the true life. Doon ka lang magkakaroon ng tinatawag na totoong buhay when you give your life to Jesus. Doon ka lang magkakaroon ng tinatawag na fulfillment and life, purpose in life, when we follow Christ in our lives. So Jesus is challenging us to give our life to Him. Amen? So, as I said, Christianity was born out of sacrifice when Jesus gave his life for us so that we could be saved. The same thing with the apostles. All the apostles gave their life. Only John, John the Beloved was not, uh, did not die in a martyr death, but all of the apostles died a martyr death. So like some of the example, I just want to read it quickly. Uh, I hope you'll really uh, listen to this, how much uh, this, this, this apostle suffer for all of us so that we would be able to found the true freedom, so that we would be able to be saved, be able to come to know him. So Matthew suffered martyrdom in Utopia, killed by a sword. Mark died in Alexandria, Egypt, dragged by horse through the street until he was dead. Luke was hung in Greece as a result of his preaching to the lost there. Peter was crucified upside down. Bakit kaya upside down? Refusing to be crucified upright, for he felt he was not worthy to die as the Lord did. And James, the brother of Jesus, was thrown down more than a hundred feet from the pinnacle of the temple. Sakit nun. When he refused to deny his faith in Christ, when they discovered that he survived the fall, they beat him to death with a club. Matthias, the apostle chosen to replace Judas Iscariot, 
was stoned and beheaded. And of course, Paul was tortured and then beheaded by the Emperor Nero. So, makita natin that this apostle really suffered so much. Not only the apostle give their lives, but thousands, even hundreds of thousands of Christians and missionaries have been given their lives in order for you and I to be saved. Amen? At kung titingnan ninyo, I don't know, kung you heard the news, yung ISIS, di ba? May mga pinugutan na ulo ng mga Christians because they don't want to deny their faith. So, they were killed. So, God has a calling. May calling ng mart- Martin, martyrhood. And that's the highest calling. Hindi basta tinatawag ang sino man to die for Christ. Okay? And if you die for Christ, you are considered worthy to share the suffering of Jesus. What an honor and what a privilege. Amen? At alam nyo, every time Christians died, every time Christians are persecuted, killed, alam nyo ba, nadadagdagan lalo ang nagiging Christian. Sabi nila, from every one person na nagkaroon ng martyr death, nagro-rise up yung 100 people, giving their lives to Jesus. That's how powerful the death of Christ and the death of these apostles. Bakit? Because they know. Sabi nila, why are these people you know, uh, willing to give their lives to this man, to this person they call Jesus Christ. He must be real. Maaring totoo nga siya. Kaya nila ginagawa ito. And Jesus said to us in the gospel, huwag kayong matakot dun sa, pwede lang kayong patayin physically. Matakot kayo to the one who can only, not only kill your body, but after you've been killed, you will be thrown in hell. Alright? Yun ang mas katakutan natin. When you are giving your life to Christ, there is so much reward in that. There's so much reward, crown, and, there's, and Jesus promised that those who have given their lives, those who have given their, up their families, they will gain them in this lifetime and even eternal life. So may mga, mga, mga rewards ang Lord para sa atin. Amen? It might be here or it might be in eternity. But if you are suffering for Christ, you're not suffering because may kasalanan ka, nahuli ka. But if you are suffering because you're doing the will of God, rejoice. Amen? Maring walang nakakakita nun between you and God. Rejoice because great is the reward that you have in heaven. May hinahanda ang sayo ang Lord na napakaganda. And so, these people sacrifice their lives. Personal sacrifice. Even dito sa Pilipinas, alright? Christians like Ray Burnham. I don't know if you heard the name Ray Burnham. He was killed in a gun battle with Abu Sayyaf. Diba, na-kidnap siya? And he was killed. Uh, si Bill Hyde, he's a Southern Baptist missionary. He died in the bow from bomb blast at the airport. And many, many others have left home, families, career, comforts of life in America so that, uh, and in other places so that you and I could hear the gospel. People have sacrificed their time, money, strength, and their lives to advance the cause of Christ down through the ages. So why, would this, why should we think that it will be any different? Bakit natin iisipin na, na why should we think that this gospel will go forth apart from sacrifice? It won't. Hindi maaring uh, the gospel will go out without the sacrifice. Amen? Kapag tayo ay pupunta sa, hindi tayo lahat, not all of us would be able to go to other nation. Somebody need to stay so that they could work and support the mission. Somebody could, should have to stay to organize a prayer group because it's a battlefield there in the mission, and they need prayer warriors. They need people. Uh, not everybody could go because some need to, uh, uh, to, to be an encourager or be, uh, be able to help those people in the mission through, like, you know, through email or through uh, other projects so that they would be supported. Amen? So, what is our part? 
in the, in the Great Commission. What is our part here? So that is a good question, amen? So here in BCA, we encourage you to become a, like, you know, you know uh, we want to help you to become missionary. Uh, there is a preparation process, of course. We have short-term missions. Uh, we have this, what we call the, the mission, the Kairos course. That's a mission course that you have to take to prepare you for a short-term mission. Of course, you can establish mission prayer groups, encourage missionary through email and communication. You can, be, you can support financially, help in mobilization, logistic, care group. You can give your financial support. And you can, uh, you can do maybe other things. Maybe the Lord is uh, telling you to do things to be a part of the mission. So it might not be what I've said, but there's something in your heart that you feel like you need to do for mission, for the missionaries. So just go for it. Amen? So we need to sacrifice. We need to have a part in the uh, what we call the Great Commission. So the question is, what would be my part? What am I willing to sacrifice for the sake of the Great Commission? Let's all stand up.